everyone. Thank you for joining us today at our December Lunch and Learn during National Drunk and Drugged Driving Prevention Month as we welcome a guest speaker on ODOT. My name is Billy Joe Nickens. I work for the Oregon Department of Transportation. I am their Eastern Oregon Safety Coordinator. Um, so Eastern Oregon, I cover eight counties that include Morrow, Umatilla, Union, Baker, Wallala, Grant, Harney, and Malheur. And what I do essentially is I, I work with communities in those in those counties um, to bring awareness and do some outreach around anything that has to do with traveling on roadways safely. So that can be pedestrian safety, it can be bike safety, which includes um, talking about helmets, um, DUI prevention, distracted driving prevention. Um, we do some motorcycle safety. Um, anything and everything on our roadways to make sure that, that users are safe. So, so that's kind of in a nutshell what I do. Um, I was asked to come and speak today because um, December is National 3D Month, which we'll talk about a little bit more in just a moment. Um, but I thought it was a great opportunity um, to talk broadly about safe driving for the holidays. So we're actually going to touch on several things today. We're going to talk about um, winter driving and um, preparing for winter driving. If you are here in Eastern Oregon, um, you have likely been caught behind a road closure due to ice or snow, um, jackknife vehicles, uh, all kinds of things. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about winter driving and preparing for that. Um, I just this week actually got stuck behind a road closure because I did not use trip check as I'm gonna encourage you all to do. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our little ones traveling um, this winter as we're heading to see family or friends um, and not forgetting that we need to, to keep those those littles in mind too um, and some tips and tricks when we are transporting kids and then we will end the conversation today with um, national drunk and drug driving um, i'm sorry about that my phone my home phone is a little bit possessed so <laughs> you're going to hear some strange noises probably in just a moment um, all right, so um, I know this piece is not interactive, but throughout my presentation, you're going to see numbers jump up on the screen. Um, and, and so instead of asking, what do you think that means? I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Um, 2019 is the most recent data that we have. Um, that's that's been vetted and 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 proven to be accurate shown to be accurate with our with our stats right now so we're going to talk about 2019 data throughout our presentation today in 2019 in umatilla county only there were 174 winter driving related crashes where three people were killed and 107 people were injured um and and if that if that number itself doesn't make you go <gasps> a little bit. Um, consider we are only talking about crashes in Umatilla County on wet, icy, or snowy roads in those conditions, um, and it is only tabulated between the months of January through March and again October through December. So we're only talking about six months of the year, um, that number of crashes, and that's why we're going to talk, we try to talk more about winter driving. Um, before you even get out on the road, it's a great idea to think about an emergency supply kit. And I know we talk about that, and you've probably hear, heard about that if you were in driver ed when you were when you were in school, um, or or even different presentations. They talk about having having a go kit in your car, right? So we talk about it, but not a lot of people I find actually do it. So. Um, I wanted to put this up here because it's it's really important. We actually, I was in Pilot Rock two days this week um, with some community partners and we spoke to their entire sixth grade through 12th grade student body and we talked a little bit with them about um, even some of the younger ones, the sixth graders. I said, you know, you guys aren't able to drive yet, but you can help your families put together this preparedness kit for winter driving. Um, I was actually stuck last year uh, at the Wild Horse um, exit for five hours behind a road closure, um, and I really, we really could have used some snacks at the very least. Uh, we didn't have our go kit with us, so um, you never know when you're when when you're going to be behind a road closure or get stuck somewhere. Um, conditions in Eastern Oregon change rapidly. 
Um, so there's there's just a quick list of, of things that are easy to throw into your vehicle um, to make sure you have with you. And then I just wanted to do a plug for trip check. Um, we are really lucky in Eastern Oregon to have a couple of really fantastic media outlets, um, My Columbia Basin and Elkhorn Media Group, and they, they do a fantastic job on Facebook um, with road closures and road conditions. Um, but, but if you haven't used TripCheck, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. We've done some really great upgrades to TripCheck in the last um, year or so. There have been um, the addition of many, many traffic cameras. If you haven't checked it out, it's this little, um, this little graphic here and that, that shows that there's a camera. We've added many traffic cameras on some of our rural, more rural routes in Eastern Oregon and several more traffic cameras um, around the Cabbage Hill area, which would be, is very, very helpful. Um, there's also been an addition, if you've been on Cabbage recently, which I'm, I'm sure many of you have, if you're from the area, um, many more signs, um, those over, over the freeway signs that, that uh, can give you messages about visibility, about crashes coming up. Um, so a lot more opportunity to communicate um, with the traveling public. Um, and then they also kind of help with lighting too. We've, we have had some of those come up in, in the Baker Valley um, area where some of the feedback we've got from the public is it kind of helps light up the highway at night too. So um, we've had the opportunity to make some great upgrades to trip check and I really encourage you guys to know before you go and check on that before you jump on the road. All right, so we're gonna transition um from that into car seats and when we're when we're thinking about our littles and traveling with our our little people um 2019 we had 16 children between the ages of zero and nine who were injured in traffic crashes just in umatilla county um fortunately in 2019 there were no fatalities um for kiddos in that age group so that's a really good thing um but we did have 16 kids who were injured that year when we talk about car seat safety and transporting kids, um, there's some really great agencies uh, who, who provide car seat checks. And I know Good Shepherd has um, a group of, of really experienced and wonderful technicians. So thank you to Good Shepherd for providing that service. Uh, St. Anthony as well. Um, I know the, the tribe uh, just got a new technician certified. So, so we've got technicians sprinkled around Umatilla County and all over the state to help folks out but specifically when we're talking about winter driving um sometimes some of people you know pack pack their cars so full to go see family they forget to check their seats a lot of times they'll forget to check make sure they're still tight tightening up those seats um, is a great idea uh, just to make that part of your your routine to check when you're getting ready to go out on a trip but also um one of the things that we talk about a lot in the winter time is keeping your kids warm when they're in their seats um, and making sure they're not wearing big bulky coats because if you, um, if you can see right here, this he looks pretty sad there. Um, if you if you put a winter coat on your kiddo and then you um, fit your your straps to that winter coat, um, it actually it it actually there's a lot of a lot of slack and a lot of um, extra space in there, um, which can can be really detrimental in a crash. Um, because if you were to take that coat off, if you have it fit tight here and then you take the coat off, there would be a lot of room if you put him in there, you put, put your little guy in there um, afterwards. Like maybe you, you get out of grandma's house to take the coat off and you guys are gonna just run somewhere real quick and he's got this little light, light shirt on. There's gonna be a lot of space in there. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are always continuing to, to fit your kiddo um, just in their regular clothing and then some some great ideas uh, to keep your kids warm in the car. I really love this one. Um, you can you can get your kiddo in there and then take the coat and put it over kind of backwards so you can put their arms up like in it from from backwards there and keep them warm that way. If they really want to wear their coat, you can use a blankie. Um, that's appealing to me in the car. I love having a blanket in the car. Um, so so just some ideas to keep your kids warm and then. Um, if you're a Christmas story, I had to throw that in there. Christmas story movie uh, buff, you'll get that reference too. We love we love Randy in this house. Um, so so that's a great thing to consider when you are getting ready to travel with your kiddos. 
Okay. Um, our next our next topic area. In 2019, there were 12 people in Umatilla County who were killed or seriously injured um, in alcohol-related crashes, and 10 who were killed or seriously injured in drug-related crashes. Um, if and again, this is just Umatilla County. Um, and, and so what's interesting, I am not showing you several years worth of data, but it's important to, to note, it would be important to note that um, our drug related crash numbers have been very under um, reported for years. So I, I think when I was pulling the data for this presentation, two or three years ago, Umatilla County had consistently one to two drug related um, fatalities or serious injuries. Um, due to traffic crashes. And, and um, with, with some of the changes in the state, we're starting, to, we're starting to see and we're starting to track a lot more drug-related um, crashes. So, so our numbers across the state and the numbers across Eastern Oregon in that area um, have been steadily climbing. Uh, so, um, so this number down here, I think, I think for a while we're gonna start to see climb. Hopefully we can, we can do some, some awareness and work on our communities um to bring that number down uh, because it is pretty scary how how quickly our drug related crash numbers are going up december is national 3d month if you haven't heard of that it's national drunk and drug driving prevention month um, and this has been around for a long time since 1981 um, so it's it's really just to to help um, bring awareness to preventing impaired driving um, and really promoting the idea of designated drivers, sober ride, um, sober ride programs, driving sober, um, any of those things. I and mean, we want to promote that every year, um, but, but there's a big push in December because um, we see a huge increase in instances of impaired driving between from the day before Thanksgiving through New Year's. Um, that's, that's kind of our, one of our biggest spikes throughout the entire year. Um, so we really, we really want to prioritize December with some of those messages. Um, what, what can you do? Just, um, I don't know where all of you work. I don't know where you all live. Um, but here are just some, some ideas. Um, if yourself, if you're going to be going to a holiday party this year, um, plan ahead. Make sure you have a sober driver, or, or you're going to be the sober driver. However, however that um, works out for you and, and your family. Um, remembering that slogan from, from a long time ago, which is actually where we started seeing drunk driving um, kind of plateau, our, our number for alcohol, drunk driving and, and the um, acceptability. People, people started when we, when MAD, uh, Mothers Against Drug Driving, when they started that campaign, Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk, that's when we started to see that shift about um, drunk driving being not, not acceptable anymore. It's not okay. Um, and so just keeping those things in mind, um, if you take the keys from your friend and they get mad at you, it's better to have a mad friend for a little while um, than a friend who you don't get to see anymore. So, so keeping those things in mind. Um, one of the things we talk to people about if you're the host of a party, um, it's always a really great idea to uh, make sure that you're offering drinks that are non-alcoholic. Um, making sure that your party is not centered around alcohol um, or, or any other drug for that matter, uh, making sure that there are um, non-alcoholic um, um, food, drinks, all those kinds of things available for folks if they, um, if they don't want to partake in, in those options, um, making sure that the party is about being together and, and more um, than the alcohol. And then um, if you want to take it a step further, if you have a story, share your story. Um, you can always write a letter to the editor. December is a great time to do that. Um, I, myself, this, the story that I have, my, my uncle, um, long before I was, was born, uh, but my uncle was killed on December 24th of 1947 um, by a drunk driver. He was taking his younger brother outside to get the mail, who was my other uncle, um, obviously. And um, a drunk driver was, was heading towards them, um, driving erratically, and my older uncle pushed his younger brother into a ditch and saved his life. Um, and he was killed instantly on Christmas Eve. So uh, my mother was, was 10 months old. Um, 
and and that impacted her family as as you can imagine um, for forever. Um, it kind of changed the dynamic of their whole family. So um, I know many of us have stories, unfortunately, and I I would love to see the number of us that have those stories decline. Um, and so if you feel compelled to sh share your story, um, write write a letter to the editor, um, share images on Facebook, share. Share um, videos on Facebook. Um, start start that conversation in your community. Um, and then, if you belong to an agency that has the opportunity to do awareness events and activities, um, there there are ideas out there for um, for doing 3D month um, activities and events themselves. I have a um, a coworker in Southwest Oregon who um, who kind of headed up. A committee to do a 3G 3D month activity every year, um, and they pulled together law enforcement, fire, kinds of different community partners, and they put on this big event every year. Um, so those kind of things are an option too. Whatever, whatever you are feel compelled to do, um, and I hope that if any of you have any of these ideas that you would like to take on in your communities, uh, think of me as a resource. I'm happy to help. There's all kinds of things that I can provide um, to help you in those in those efforts. So um, the other thing to do on a small scale, smaller scale, if you don't want to do an entire event, if you have outreach and awareness activities and events already happening, um, just start slipping in some of these messaging into there. I know uh, I brought a one of those tabletop banners that says driving high is a DUI over to Good Shepherd um, this summer. So even just starting those conversations in your communities in those ways, having a banner up, seeing if somebody will say something about it. Um, we have found after the legalization of marijuana a few years ago in our state, um, some of the research and, and surveys that we did came back and said that a lot of communities don't think of marijuana as an impairing substance. Um, and I would say even after a lot of education campaigns, there's probably a large sector of our communities that still feel the same way. And, and another sector of the community who doesn't realize that driving under the influence of marijuana can get you a DUI. So just starting with those conversations to raise awareness can be really important and really impactful. Um, and then finally, what is the best defense against a drunk or a drug driver? Um, and this, we talk to, to kids about this too. Um, and if I could see you and I could see if I could see some hands raised here, I would ask you, um, what do you think the best offense against a drunk or drug driver is on the road? And the answer to that is wearing your seatbelt. Um, every ride, every time. Um, wearing your seatbelt is the best thing you can do um, as a defense against impaired driving, um, but also against speeding. We've seen with, with COVID, uh, we have seen a huge increase in our speed related incidents and not only just the number of incidents, but the speed that people are traveling. We're consistently hearing reports from law enforcement of people being stopped over 100 miles an hour. Uh, we had we've had construction projects going where people are being being stopped in a work zone for traveling over 100 miles an hour. Um, so, so we've seen some really, really scary um, trends happening um, across the United States, in Oregon, and even in Eastern Oregon, we're seeing a lot of those same trends. So wearing your seatbelt is um, the best defense, the best way that you can protect you and the people in your vehicle against whatever else might be on the road. <laughs> 